Ladies and gentlemen, our next competitor was born and raised in Oshawa, Ontario. The next Italian comic proudly presents Robert Serra. I love that song, eh? Every time I hear that song, I feel like Tony Monaco is just gonna pop out of anywhere. I could be at home showering. Julia. He pops out of the sink, he's just like, hey, Tony Monaco live on your radio, Z1035. <laughs> it's great. I am Robert Serra, I'm from Oshawa, Ontario. Don't hold that against me. <laughs> I go by a few different names. Rob, Nonofredo, Roberto. My wife's got a cute one for me, because I'm tall. She calls me Grande Scemmo. <laughs> that, that one might be easier for you guys to remember. <laughs> uh, a little bit about myself, I'm Calabrese. I'm also six foot seven inches tall. Yeah, 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 yeah. Forza Calabria! <laughs> Woo! I'm also six foot seven inches tall, so uh, I know a lot of you are looking at that, doing the math, going, that doesn't make sense. Uh, I want to address that, yes, my father was a German mailman. I feel like I just saw all the nonne in here going to a biblical coma. They were like, Maria, l'hai sentiti, adulterio. Uh, I want to give a uh, huge thanks to Giuseppe for this. Uh, this opportunity for all the other comics and myself, this is huge. I also really want to thank him for doing it in Hamilton. Uh, traffic's going to be fun on the way home. <laughs> Even a bunch of you Toronto, on, uh, downtown Toronto people are looking like, hey, let's go. I'm kidding, Hamilton's great. If you guys ever have self-confidence issues, just walk downtown. <laughs> you feel like you won Lotto Max, genetics edition. Hey, hey, and that's coming from me, eh? My body type is Jenny Craig before. <laughs> We're gonna have fun this afternoon. I do wanna warn you guys about something, though. Uh, if I'm slurring a little bit or I stumble up here on stage, it's not the 25 vodka shooters I had. I have MS. Um, for those of you that don't know MS, it's an autoimmune disease, attacks the nervous system. When there's a flare up, you're unable to function. Unable to function is basically how I am when anybody brings food to the table. <laughs> I tried to explain that to my nono one day. He didn't understand, but quick as a whip, he looks at me and goes, MS, molti spuntini. <laughs> I go, yeah, no, no, I'm eating myself into the grave with a disease called lots of snacking. Meanwhile, you're on the couch with your third bowl of pasta. Would you guys believe this? I got my diagnosis three days after my wedding. My poor wife, I know, eh? She's standing up there at the altar, love in her eyes, the priest, do you take this man? She's like, I do. I'm sitting there going, for the next six months, you're gonna have to get me dressed. By month four, the coffee in the morning started to taste a little bleachy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, no, marriage is great, marriage is fine. I love being married. Marriage is hard though, eh? They tell you it's hard, but it is hard. I, I tried to do the smart thing, I didn't marry another Italian. I tried to make a happy life. I married a half Italian, half Portuguese. <laughs> thank you. In the nome del Padre, Fili, Spiritu Santi. It's great. Um, I got one question though. Why, when we marry a similar culture, we don't find the similarities. We always find the differences. We always argue. We have the dumbest arguments. And arguing with my wife, it's not good. She is not a fair fighter. One day we were arguing, it got so bad all day. She looks at me and goes, that's it, I'm ending this. She runs upstairs to the room. I hear her open up the safe. She comes back down. She's got my birth certificate and a pair of scissors. Snip, snip. She goes, there, your opinion doesn't matter because you don't exist. I go, you just cut off my birth certificate. What are you, no frills chopping up the competition? <laughs> you guys wanna know what the argument was about? Even if you don't, it doesn't matter. I have the microphone, so I'm gonna tell you anyways. <laughs> we were arguing about whether to teach my eight-month-old daughter Italian or Portuguese when she starts talking. Now, I think I have you all on my side. There's only one right answer, Italian. <laughs> what did I say? 
Uh, who, who wants their eight-month-old daughter to grow up sounding like a drunk Russian trying to speak French? You know, like, hola, comment je tu? It sounds like a hiccup. Oh, Kurish Kutash boy. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I, I have a lot of love for Portugal. Because without Portugal, I would have never met my wife. And we would have never had these arguments. I'm kidding. I, I, I love sleeping on the couch every night. <laughs> Something that's always made me laugh. Italian mothers get this rap for treating their sons like gold. I don't know if it's just my experiences with my Calabrese mother. That's not the case. They can be very, very mean. I remember when me and my wife got engaged, we sent over a photo, that token, like, she said yes. My mom, 30 seconds, probably even less than 30 seconds, types back, Pure le meglio vino si fare acido. Even the best vinegar turn, or wine turns to vinegar. Now, I'm not sure if that was a stab at me or my wife, but when I asked her, she always has the same answer. Roberto, I'm just to say, I don't want to get involved. <laughs> and she does it with everything, eh? Me and my wife, we bought a truck, because we both love trucks, love it. Mom, come over, check out the truck. Ah, oh, it's a beautiful color. You take lots of stuff in the back. Nice a truck. Ma, maybe I'm just a smarter with the money. I don't do stupid things like this, a big shot. I'm just to say, I don't want to get involved. <laughs> it's not just with me, too. It's with everybody. One day, my comadre Maria was at the house. My mom's walking her to the door. Okay, bye, Maria. Oh, before you go, you got to give me the number to your hairdresser. She's a beautiful job. The door closes. She turns to me, and out come the insults. My vista su capigli. She goes, why is she not dress up for me? I go, ma, dress up for you? What are you, the queen of England? You've been wearing the same stained apron for 35 years. <laughs> my father, he's even worse. Everything was work with this guy. I'm going to go to work until I'm dead, and then I go back for overtime. <laughs> you can only imagine his depression when I got my diagnosis. I was off for six months. He's walking around the house at six in the morning. Okay, any lazy people in here want to go for work? <laughs> like, Pa, I can't even use my hand properly in the bathroom. How am I going to help you at work? <laughs> and then they always want to help. But when Italian parents help, it's never helping. It's always them yelling the same thing and us just bawling our eyes out. <laughs> He's really into the gym. All the pre-workouts and proteins and stuff. He thought a pre-workout would help me get out of bed. He's sitting there yelling all the time. Try the pre-workout, it's going to work. I go, Papa, that's not how things are. It's not going to work like, try the pre-workout. <laughs> he goes, it makes you all sweaty, tingly. I do like a million reps at the gym. It's OK. I go, Papa, sweaty and tingly, that's not impressive. Try being an overweight Italian with MS. I get sweaty from being tingly. My body thinks the tingles are exercise. <laughs> I go, and then you sit me at a table with my nonna's cooking? Woo, I'm using the tablecloth like a mucaturi. My wife, she's standing there trying to tell everybody it's just a flare-up. In a few minutes, he's going to be okay. My father, try the pre-workout. What the hell? <laughs> I look over at the table. He's sprinkling pre-workout instead of parmigiano on the pasta. <laughs> My mom pokes her head out, and she goes, oh, it's another flare-up. He's just a fat, excited for seafood. <laughs> I finally come out of it. I go, Ma, please, you got to talk to him. Tell him to stop. The, the pre-workout, it, it's not going to work. It, it, it doesn't work like that. This is my spinal cord. She looks at me, smiles. Ah, Roberto, bello faccia. I'm not going to say nothing. I don't want to get involved. <laughs> I'm Robert Serra. Thank you, guys. You guys have been great. I just feel like I went to Wonderland. They told me that there's a height limit on the ride. I, <laughs> wow, you did absolutely amazing. Let's give a huge round of applause to Robert. Sarah. I like the way you incorporated what's going on in your life. You made it real, made it exciting, and uh, because I know it's tough what you're going through. But hey, you know what? Absolutely amazing. What are your, what are your thoughts about uh, what's, what's happening right now? Oh, it's amazing. Every, everything's been great. You know, all the other competitors, everything's been amazing. I'm very excited for this. 
Uh, amazing work, amazing work. Let's hear from our judges. Roberto, Roberto. It's Lucio Giuliano here, buddy. Listen, um, fantastic job. Good job, buddy. Um, your intro, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Coming out here, high energy, getting the crowd involved. Good job with that. That's my biggest thing. As a, yeah, go ahead, yeah, for sure. Um, little things, and for the rest of the comics back there, biggest pet peeve, and I'm sure the other comics up here can, and what you did uh, that I noticed that none of the other comics did, is you grab the mic stand and you put it to the side. That's a sign of a pro professional right there. Good job. Small things like that make a uh, big meaning. Dude, um, you, knew, you knew where you were. You knew your location. You made fun of Hamilton. You made fun of where you are. Good job on that. Um, talking about yourself and your vulnerability and using that in your act shows how strong you are. Good job. Amazing, amazing, amazing. <clears throat> and listen, you can never go wrong with making fun of the Portuguese, so good job, buddy. Good job. Congratulations. Mr. Sarah, Vince Tedesco here. I am not a stand-up comic, so I don't care where you put the mic stand. You are funny either way. Um, loved, loved, loved that you were very self-deprecating, uh, talking about your MS. Uh, you don't understand how much I, I love that. People who can embrace every negative downfall or anything that is perceived right. as negative connotation, and turning it into a positive is uh, a defeat amongst uh, many other things. The fact you made it funny, even better. The fact that you're a six foot seven calabresi scares me even more. Um, <laughs> shout out Durham Region. I'm also a Durham Region. Uh, uh, cool. Grow upper, uh, Ajax, whatever. That uh, I live in Toronto now. Fuck that place. Anyways, uh, but still. <laughs> Good stuff, very funny. Nice shout out to the word Mukaturi. Hey, Calabresi in the house, you gotta love it. Uh, you owned it, buddy. That was very funny. You, you had some dark humor. Joe, Joe and I even cracked up at the coffee tasting a little bleachy. Yeah, there was one. I, I couldn't stop laughing when, when your wife tried to kill you. It was perfect. <laughs> like, yeah, like stuff like that, buddy. You, you hit it on the head. Boom. Uh, home run, great set, buddy. Awesome show. Hey, Robert, um, you are a likable guy. You have such a nice smile. I love when comedians smile. As opposed to me, I'm always crying. Uh, love the self-deprecating. Um, like, like, I, like what they said, that I, I was feeling so bad for you. You went into the MS and then bang, with the bleach. You got me. Big laugh, big laugh. And uh, how perfect is Portuguese sounds like a drunk Russian trying to speak French. That was so funny. I was mad because you came up with it before I did. No, I'm kidding. Really wonderful stuff. You're sick. I love how you guys look like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. Good work, man. Good work. I have no comeback for that because he's right. <laughs> one of the tallest Italians I've ever seen in my life. Oh, we're good? Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thanks to your judges. And once again, a huge round of applause to Robert, Sarah, 